These carnivorous plants live on insects, which they trap and devour. They also eat hamburgers. Watch this. These amazing plants are the subject of a book by Lynn and Gray Poole. What are your names, please? My name is Lynn Poole, and this is my husband, Gray Poole. My name is Lynn Poole, and this is my brother, Gray Poole. My name is Gray Poole, and this is my husband, Lynn Poole. Of these three sets of people, only one set is the real Lynn and Gray Poole. The other two sets are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Gene Rayburn, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth. And here sitting in for Bud Collier is our host for tonight, one of the stars of Broadway's Never Too Late, Orson Bean. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, to relax tension, to soothe irritability. Anison. Well, I guess everyone would like to know that our dear buddy Bud Collier is getting along just fine. Be back with us real soon. Last week, Gene, you substituted for Bud, and I hope yes. I do as good a job tonight. I'm sure you will, Orson. Uh, you started out great by knocking over the chair, as you said. <laughs> Next week, Tom Post and my old pal will be here in the hot seat. Well, uh, I don't know whether I'm looking forward to it or not. I already had a feeling that I want to stump the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Please open up your envelopes and follow along as I read. We, Lynn and Gray Poole, write books for young people. Our latest deals with insect-eating plants. These amazing plants lure their victims by either scent or color. Once within striking distance, the insects are caught by various ingenious methods. Sundews glue their prey on sticky tentacles. The cobra plant drowns insects in a pool of water. One type of fungus catches worms with a living lasso. <laughs> the Venus flytrap snaps its leaves shut about the victim. We believe that this proves that the plant is quicker than the fly. Signed, Lynn and Gray Poole. <laughs> Panel, these six people all claim to be Lynn and Gray Poole, authors of a book entitled Insect Eating Plants. Let's start the questions with Peggy Cass. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Poole, number one. Uh, may I ask you, do these grow in the United States? Yes, they do. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Lynn Poole, number three. Do any of them grow around New York? Yes, they do. Uh, number two, Lynn Poole, number, uh, Gray Poole, number two. Uh, like, would you, could you get them in Larchmont? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they grow in Larchmont. They do. Certain varieties, though. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lynn, uh, gray pool number three. Uh, did they, is that the way they feed themselves? I mean, don't they get anything from the earth? No. No what? They don't get anything? No from nourishment from the earth. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gene Rayburn number one. Uh, gray pool. You limp pool, gray pool, you. Uh, uh, gray pool, you. Number two. What uh, does stamen mean in horticultural terms? Uh, stamen is the... Thank you, number two. That's uh, not a foreign language, is it, that word? No. All right. No, it's a perfectly good American word. Uh, Linpool, number three. Do you know what uh, in the world of botany a uh, pistol refers to? A pistol in the, word, uh, the world of botany is a, uh, the top of the flower uh, that's used in the pollination by uh, birds and bees and Thank you. Around. Number... Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number two, the, uh, l l l the left one. Are you Gray or Lynn? No, I'm Lynn Poole. Lynn, uh, if these if plants don't get any insects or hamburger, would they starve to death? Well, they would if, uh, if this went on long enough. 
But uh, nature wouldn't let this happen. Thank you. Great pool number one. Uh, how, can you spell pistol for me as uh, in botany? I believe it's P-I-S-T-O-L. Thank you. And uh, number three, uh, Gray Poole, the gentleman. Yes, number three? I'm Are you, in you're Lynn, Lynn, thank you so much. Uh, Lynn, would you tell me where I could find a plant like this in Larchmont? Uh, I don't know Larchmont well enough, but certainly around the uh, shore somewhere or a boggy area. Tom Post. Boggy. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the left pool in the center, number two, is L Lynn Gray. Lynn, Lynn Pool. Lynn Pool. Lynn, <laughs> uh, are there plants that live on air alone? Uh, yes, there are plants. In botany, you mean. There are plants which live on air alone. Uh, and, and number two, his brother, Gray. Uh, what are those plants called? Do you know? Uh, yes. Uh, parasites. Thank you. No, uh, Gray, number three. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know that's the lady. Uh, 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 some of these plants are not parasitic. Do you know the name of those plants? Amphiphytes. Uh, what uh, rather exotic flower comes from that group? Do you know number three, Gray? Orchids. Orchids. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It's time to vote. Without consultation, mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will get $250 for each incorrect vote. All marked, my good people? Everybody? Tom Poston. Well, uh, I voted for number three. I wasn't too pleased with his answer about what a pistol is, but it's, it, it, it had, it, the pollination was right anyway. And uh, they looked like the kind of people who would uh, enjoy writing books for children. I, I liked them. Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number three, too, because I don't think anybody, two fellas, wouldn't write for children, and that she's a lady, and they understand children, so that's why I voted for three. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Rayburn? I went for number three also, uh, Orson, and mainly because it seemed like uh, number three gave me a pretty good refresher course in uh, botany, which I took a long time ago. <laughs> Aunt Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three. <laughs> Well, number one, uh, Mr. Graypool said uh, that pistol is spelled P-I-S-T-O-L, and I think it's P-I-S-T-I-L in botany. And number two, couldn't answer your question very quickly about stamen, I think it was. So I voted for number three, Pool. I'll answer it now. <laughs> <laughs> Too late to answer it now. The votes are all in and the minds are made up. Now let's find out which two of these six people are the authors of insect-eating plants. Will the real Lynn and Gray Pool please... Stand up. I guess you people, uh, you really know your bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Team number one, uh, what are your real names and what do you really do? My name is Marcia Bragg, and I'm a housewife from Tenafly, New Jersey. <laughs> uh, and my name is Peter Wilhelm. I'm a lumber salesman. I'm not married to this young lady, but she's my sister-in-law. Oh. <laughs> and team number two, what are your real names, gentlemen? What do you really do? Well, my name is Dan Saratello, and I'm films manager for the British Travel Association. And my name is Vernon Bame, president of Skytrack, and at the moment, the only employee of Skytrack and I haven't seen this man before in my life until this morning. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that the panel was too smart for you, but you do get $150 from Anison, and there is a gift box of fine products from the makers of Anison for each of you on the way out. Thanks, and good luck. <laughs> now, a word about Anison. No, I haven't. I have too much work for such nonsense. Control yourself. Sure, you have a headache, you're tense, irritable. But don't take it out on others. You need Anison for fast relief. The big difference in Anison makes a big difference in the way you feel. Minutes after taking Anison, headache pain's gone. So tension's gone. Irritability's gone. You're in control again. 
You see, Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, a combination of ingredients with a particular ingredient missing from aspirin, still missing with buffering, combined in Anison. Anison relieves all these headache miseries, relieves pain fast, to relax tension fast, soothe irritability fast. Millions get fast relief and no stomach upset. The big difference in Anison makes a big difference in the way you feel. And now, let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jim Clark. My name is Jim Clark. My name is Jim Clark. Panel, please listen as I read. I, Jim Clark, am a sheep farmer. I'm better known, however, as an automobile racing driver. In this year's first eight Grand Prix races, I placed first in five, second in one, and third in another. With two races still to be run, I have already clinched the championship. I am the youngest man in history to become a Grand Prix world champion driver. Signed, Jim Clark. <laughs> panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Jim Clark, 1963 Grand Prix champion. Let's start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, Orson. Uh, number two, where do you sheep farm? Berwickshire. Where's that? Scotland. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, number three, can you tell me the name of the famous uh, French race that goes on for quite a long time? Le Mans. Uh, number one, do you know about a race called Monza? I do. Where is it run? In Italy. Thank you. Uh, number three, what is the Targa, uh, number two, what is the Targa Florio? Italian race, Sicily. Thank you. Number three, when you, where do you sheep farm? In Berkshire. Also? Yeah. How many sheep do you have? About 2,000. Oh, how marvelous. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of sheep. <laughs> Tom Poston. Number three, uh, I love you. You're jolly and cheerful and that's nice. Number three, what is a Kia bird and how does it uh, relate to sheep uh, herding and so forth? Sorry, I didn't get K-E-A, Kia bird, Kia bird. I don't know. Do you know number one? No, I don't. Number two? New to me. New to you. It's an Australian bird. Now do you know how it relates to sheep, number three? No. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, who is uh, Foyt? A.J. Foyt, driver. What happened to him uh, yesterday or today? You know? I don't know. Number two? You know? I believe he was suspended. Uh, thank you. And we go to Peggy Cass. Number two, will you please finish this line for me? Scots were hay. Scots were hay. You know the end of it? Number three, do you? Yes. Would you say it to me, please? Uh, Scots were hay. Were Wallace Blair? Number one, could you please tell me what that thing is that they throw at the Braemar games? The cable. Oh, I thought that was it. Uh, number two, what, where's the first or fourth? <laughs> Northern Scotland. Thank you. Uh, number three, what's a sparring? What is sparring? Wearing? He's wearing it with his kilt. <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, number one, where's the Mila Melia run? Mila Melia. The Mila Melia is it also run in Italy. Thank you. Number two, who? Ooh. <laughs> 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 How do we go to Gene Rayburn? Well, whichever one is the real one, having uh, won all these races, is hot as a pistol. That's P-I-S-T-O-L pistol. Uh. <laughs> <But, the laughs> Number two, uh, you ever have to dip your sheep? I. You do? I. Why? I. <laughs> to get rid of vermin. Get rid of vermin. Number one, if I give you this sequence of numbers, it has some significance to you if you're a race driver. One, five, three, six, two, four. What does that mean? It could be grid positions for a start. Uh, thank you. Well, it's time to vote. No consultations as you vote. Please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Have you... Selected your choices? No. Everybody? Gene? Yes, I'm Katie? ready. Everybody? I'm wrong, but ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? 
Uh, I th I voted for three. I voted for number three. <laughs> Looks like you've been in the sheep dip there, old buddy. Uh, no, but I had a fifth. Is it the first or fourth? <laughs> Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for three, too, because I'm part Scotch, and any Scotchman knows that Scots were hay where Wallace bled, so that's why I voted for him. Oh, boy. He knew that's it. That's number one. Oh, but he just knew it, and I just oh. knew it was he. I Gene think. Rayburn. Well, I'm breaking the pattern this time. I voted for number two. Uh, number one, <clears throat> excuse me, couldn't give me the firing order of a six-cylinder internal combustion engine. Oh, no. And, uh... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the and, <laughs> and, uh, number two gave me a very convincing... He looks to me and sounded as if he were a sheep raiser. Of course, oh. you people could have brought a sheep raiser in here who had never driven a car in his life, but we'll see. Uh, and Kitty Carlisle. Well, as you can see, I voted for number one because I don't know the firing engine of a six-cylinder, whatever it is. <laughs> and anyway, he looks reckless, daredevil, tough, even Sheep. a little... <laughs> Sheepish. <laughs> no. He looks like a racing driver to me. Well, the votes are all in, and the minds, such as they are, are made up. Now, let us see which of these three gentlemen is the real 1963 Grand Prix champion. Will the real Jim Clark please stand up? Congratulations, Mr. Clark, and good luck with the next two races, even though you don't need them. Thank you. Number one, what is your real name? What do you really do? And are you cold in those kilts? <laughs> My real name is Paul Glazer. I've never been to Scotland, and I'm employed by the New Zealand Mission to the United Nations, and I'm not cold in the kilts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got one vote. Number two, you got one vote as well. What is your real name? What do you really do? My name is Leonard Simmons, and I am employed by the Canadian Consulate in New York City. What happened to the Scotch accent? <laughs> yeah. It was a good fake Scotch accent there. Well, there have been two incorrect votes, which means a grand total of $500 from Anison. And as well, there is a gift box of the products of this fine company for each of you on the way out. Thanks, and good luck. <laughs> Here's something important for you to think about if you like peanuts. Wait, there's a big fat difference in peanuts. These roasted peanuts have this much extra fat. But Franklin dry toasted peanuts have 21% less fat in every mouthful. Roasted peanuts are boiled in oil. Franklin peanuts are toasted high and dry. Taste deliciously different. Drier, crisper. Hear them whisper. 21% less fat. Franklin, as in Ben? No, as in Peanut. Catchy name, Franklin. And now, a word about Aerowax. Like Jet Age plastic, so tough, bullets bounce off. New, new Aerowax has a Jet Age plastic so tough, you pour a dazzling self-polishing shine that lasts twice as long as ever before without buffing. Yes, a brilliant shine, so tough you can grind heels on it. So tough that dirt doesn't dull it. So tough, the shine lasts twice as long, yet won't yellow floors. New Aerowax with the Jet Age Plastic still saves you 23 cents. And now let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jose Arnold. My name is Jose Arnold. My name is Jose Arnold. Please listen while I read. I, Jose Arnold... All right, open your envelopes, yeah. and then please listen while I read. <laughs> All right, I'll wait for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, Jose Arnold, for five years was chief steward for King Saud of Arabia. I was responsible for an annual budget of five million dollars, operating the kitchens in Saud's ten elaborate palaces. I also accompanied the king on his travels, both at home and abroad. When he went to visit his desert tribes, 
I had to pack into the caravan enough cooking supplies to feed 300 people for 30 days. I once supervised a banquet during which we served a boiled breast of camel, which took 10 men to lift. It appeared on a mountain of rice garnished with five whole sheep. Signed, Jose Arnold. <laughs> All right, these three gentlemen all claim to be Jose Arnold, chief steward formerly to King Saud. We'll start with that well-known gourmet and breast of camel fancier, Gene Rayburn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Orson. Number uh, two, uh, you say you have an operating budget of $5 million? I guess you housewives of America are a little envious of this kind of budget. Uh, would you say there are some big eaters in Arabia? Uh, <laughs> number two, do people really have big appetites in the royal? Yes. They do. Uh, does the king, does King Saud have a harem? Yes. Number three, how many wives does he have? He has uh, three legal wives and uh, 60 concubines. Mm -hmm. 60, then. 60 illegal 60. Yeah. <laughs> 60. Well, listen, it's not so great. Think of all those stockings hanging out to dry in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, we'll go now to uh, Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Thank you. Number three, where is the kingdom of Swat? I don't know. Number two, where is Kuwait? In the northeast from Saudi Arabia. Number one, uh, what is the uh, part of the sheep that is always served to the honored guest? The heart, of course. The heart. Uh, number two, when you travel, when you transport all of this food, how do you take it? We had air-conditioned buses. In buses? In buses. Uh, number three, do you have refrigeration in Saudi Arabia? Yes, we have. Thank you. And we go to Tom Poston. Thank you. Number two, uh, uh, what are the Druze? <laughs> Druze? Druze? I don't know. Number one, Druze. Do you know D-R-U-S-E-S, Druze? No, I don't know. Number three, do you know? It's a tribe in the northern part of, uh, of um, Lebanon, between Lebanon and, uh, and uh, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, number three, do you know where Kuwait is? Yes, from the Persian Gulf. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is saffron used for? Saffron. It's a spice, a time that is used in their coffee. And we go to Peggy Cass. Uh, number two, uh, do you ever serve the eye of the sheep? Come on, no. Peg. No, you don't. We had the head uh, next to the body. Thank you. Number three, did you feed the three legal wives and the 60 illegal wives as well? Yes. You, yes. And, um, <laughs> can we get number two? You mean, did he one. feed them as well? <laughs> feed no, the, I mean, the legal ones as well? You, as you well. My, my dear number one, uh, King Saud was in the hospital lately, I believe. And where was the hospital? It was in uh, Switzerland. Number three, do you agree with that? It's time to vote. Please mark your ballots for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody all marked? Good. Well, Tom Poon, did you vote? I thought he looked like the kind of a guy that could really smack his lips while tasting, uh, you know, $5 million worth of potpourri. Or something. Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number three because I thought that the part that they really think is the best is the eye of the sheep. And uh, one of them didn't know that. And then he knew about those tribes. And then I figured if Tom knew and he knew that that was right. <laughs> Gene Rayburn. I voted for number three because he looks like he spent a lot of time sweating over a hot stove. <laughs> and Kitty Carlisle. Hey, ladies. I voted for number three because although he didn't know where the kingdom of Swat is, and it's in that general vicinity, nevertheless, uh, it is true that it's the eye that is the most uh, uh, important part for the honored guest. And uh, the Druzes are just where you said they were. Is that Lebanon from casting Israel. sheep's eyes when you say casting sheep's eyes at me? No, that's that a whole like different thing, Tom. That's no. All. <laughs> no. Well, the votes are all in and the minds are made up. So now let us find out which of these three gentlemen is the real former chief steward to King Saud. Will the real Jose Arnold please stand up?
<laughs> Jose Arnold has just written a book about his experiences with King Saud and uh, all the ladies and all like that. And the book is entitled Golden Swords and Pots and Pans. And it's published by Harcourt, Brace, and World. Number one, uh, what is your real name? What do you really do? Uh, my name is Louis Batori, and I'm vice president of the Batori Computer Company. <laughs> Fine. And number two, what is your real name? What do you really do? My name is Tibor Atleni. I work for a Patrician Plastic Corporation, and we are manufacturing buttons. Buttons, good. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sorry to say that the panel was a little bit too smart for you, all these gourmets over here. But you do get $150 from Anison, and there is a gift box of fine products from the makers of Anison for each of you on the way out. Congratulations. Good luck. <laughs> Well, my, my fine panel, I think we've had some interesting spots tonight. Indeed. And uh, I think I learned something interesting about you all. You, you know your onions about bugs and food and <laughs> sheep. odd things. And sheep. Sheep. <laughs> sheep dip. Yeah. What is sheep dip? You asked about I that, don't Jesus. know. I've seen it in movies. They dip the sheep in when they get some kind of disease. Uh, bugs. Uh, yeah. Vermin. He was Vermin. right. Vermin. Yeah. It's a caustic uh, water solution, an oil. And messy and terrible, and don't <laughs> fall in it and don't drink it. All right. <laughs> Unless there isn't anything That's my else. advice for the night, friends. I won't do it. I promise you, neither. Well, don't forget to join us at the same time next week, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. Until then, this is Orson Bean saying good night for Anison and reminding you, as Bud Collier always does, to tell the truth. Good night, Bud. Good night, good night Bud. Bud. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Hi, friends. This is Gary Moore with an invitation for tomorrow night. Dorothy Loudon, Roy Castle, Derwood Kirby, and Brock Peters will star in an hour of song and comedy. So look for us here on most of these stations. To tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by a new self-polishing Aero Wax with Jet Age Plastic for the tough, long-lasting shine that never yellows floors. New Arrowax. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.